entrepreneurship to me is tough. And not that like slightly uncomfortable, you know, like it's actually, it's actually extremely difficult. I mean, it, it's, it's every day not having a roadmap for where you're going and having to put all energy into a path that really doesn't have an end in sight. At the same time, I'm inspired and humbled and grateful for the opportunity to be able to create because I realize that even my ability to talk about this, um, I'm really standing on the, the shoulders of, of generations of people that have looked like me that have never had the opportunity to do that. And so, um, again, going back to this idea of, of a purpose, even when it gets tough, it is a privilege for me to be able to do what I do every day in the way that I do it and to honor the sacrifices of those kind of close and far that have made this possible. You've got to stay like, stay uh, connected to that and realize that, I mean, the alternative is, or it could be way, way worse. Ryan Wilson is the co-founder and CEO of The Gathering Spot, a private membership club that originated in Atlanta, Georgia. A diverse hub of collaboration, connection, and experiences, The Gathering Spot is home to Atlanta's creators, disruptors, entrepreneurs, executives, artists, and forward thinkers. He is also co-owner of the A3C Festival, Atlanta's popular festival merging music, tech, film, and culture. Here's Ryan's piece of the thread. What's funny is that I did not want to be an entrepreneur at all. I, my goal for my entire life was to be an attorney. And so the more and more I thought about how I could help people over time, right, that, that only seemed to lead to just like go to law school. I got to law school though and started to understand what that industry was actually like, right? And that isn't to say don't do it, but it just wasn't for me, right? I needed uh, different things kind of to happen every day and the work that I was doing was really helping one company sue another company and it just didn't feel, I didn't feel connected to the work. What I started to reflect on though was what actually made me uh, like inspired, right? And that work was community things that I was doing in DC. Um, it was building with different people on a couple of projects that I wouldn't have necessarily called businesses, but were just kind of like things we were working on. And the inspiration for the business kind of was born out of, out of that. Like how do, you, how do you find a physical place after the university setting to be able to like meet people and ultimately grow. We had no idea what we were doing in the beginning. And so CK used to come to my apartment and the, the goal of each session was to try to figure out how to take like a meaningful step each night, which led us to have to learn a lot about real estate. Um, it's tough, right? Commercial real estate is not a, a business that has a lot of people of color in it. And there are a lot of dynamics that go into being able to secure an asset. And so um, it has really been an exercise and like true study for us over the last couple of years. Proud to say now though that we're getting to the other side of it and um, the business is securing more locations and growing pretty quickly. So it was really hard for us to find a space, right? And this, um, this building gives us a lot of flexibility, but it also gives us the opportunity to um, do all the things from a functional perspective that we needed, event space, restaurant, bar, and workspace. But it's centrally located, and we didn't want to be in a traditional environment, right? This is an old rail car station that was built in 1911 um, to disrupt the city club environment and that industry broadly. We didn't want to take space that you're used to seeing city clubs take, and so uh, North Yards is a representation of that. We're kind of in a, on, a, on a different side of town in a different building. Gathering Spot is a community. Uh, we, we connect people through events, dining, and through work. Gathering Spot, more than anything else, is a community of people that are um, coming together for a shared purpose of you know, building with one another. Um, I haven't, I've, I've never said this before. If you look, if you go over to the end of Drake's second album, at the end of Headlines, he gives a blueprint for like I think how we should connect with one another, and um, it's been some, it's something that I, I reference all the time when talking to people. Um, but it basically talks about this idea of like you have to you have to to talk to people about like what was or what will be rather than what is, and um, it's been a great way for us to kind of think about how to communicate. Every good business has a fundamental thing that it's trying to solve for. Right, if you can't articulate like 
why you're doing it that's beyond I'm just trying to make some money. You have to figure out like that other thing that really, really is um, inspiring to you daily and hold on to it, right? Because this process is hard. And it, if, you're, if you're not like married to that other thing, money or fame or kind of all the superficial stuff, that's not enough for you to continue to do it. Yeah, I mean, so we, we got into a rhythm, right? I, I think that the main mistake that people make when they're kind of in the ideation phase is that it's about consistently um, talking through ideas. So TK would come to my apartment every single night at 8 p.m. and we would work from like 8 to 1 in the morning. And we treated those work sessions like we treated everything else that we were doing. I mean, it was as important as him going to work during the day, the work that we were doing at night. At a certain point though, you have to realize that, that like talk is cheap and you've got to move to actually executing on some of those ideas. I'd argue that that's harder than talking about the idea. I could talk to you all day about different concepts, right? The ability to be able to actually make those concepts exist at some point, that's really where the, where the magic is. It's really hard to sell a vision if you don't have a product, right? But one of the things that we did is understood that you kind of have to talk about everything happening as if it's going to happen at the same time. So I would talk to investors about securing a building and I would talk to buildings about securing investors, really like pointing to the idea that like on a singular date, both of those things would be ready. It's just about managing expectations on both sides. I'm not a person that believes, um, you know, you, you can't, you've got to be truthful, right? But true entrepreneurs figure out how to balance really difficult time periods where you kind of need one thing in order for another, but like both are, are, are synergistic. So we've raised two rounds of capital for the gathering spot, but I, I'd say that there's not like a, an amount of money that makes it better, right? I mean, um, I think that's, that's one of the misconceptions about people who are starting companies is that you'll reach like a point and at that point, you've, you've been funded. I mean, you'll, you'll see some of the biggest companies uh, of our time going out to the market again to raise money because if you have a large idea and you're really working towards it, you'll figure out ways to spend that cash. Um, so I, I, I'd also say too, that a, a, a part of the culture that I really try to push back against is this idea that the amount of capital that you've raised points to how good of a business you have. I think we kind of talk about the two things as being one and the same, where, um, you know, if, if a company's raised 100 million, that's a good company. If a company's only raised 100,000, that's a bad company. But really and truly, it's about the, about the quality of the product that you have. Um, Atlanta's a great city because you have examples like MailChimp and Lease Query that have that in top line revenue, doing hundreds of millions of dollars in top line revenue, but have never take, taken outside investment. So. Um, this whole like raise capital thing is a new concept and I think that founders really need to raise money if you need to, but focus more on the product that you're trying to um, build more than anything else. So even after we raised capital, we were still bootstrapping, right? So we, there's never going to be like that perfect amount of capital. Um, and I, I'm not necessarily calling for bootstrapping, I'm calling for every day the work of an entrepreneur is to work towards getting out the, the thing that they're selling into the marketplace, right? Your objective is not about raising capital because I think what you find is because when that's the focus, those entrepreneurs, once they reach that, that threshold of whatever amount of money that they needed, haven't actually built a business on the, uh, on the other end because that wasn't what the objective was. The objective was to raise money against an idea, not raise money against a business plan. Right, nuanced thing, but like actually super important when you get down to it because a lot of those businesses fail because they never figured out what their business model is. Team building is really hard when you're starting a business. Um, I, I, I've read and have heard um, across a lot of different uh, their books and, and different uh, podcasts and really believe that the first like 200 people that you hire are really co-founders in the business with you. Right, they set the tone and expectation for everything that happens for and with what you do. Um, we're living through that right now, right? I mean, the we're at a size now where it, it's beyond me. I can't run every aspect of what we do in, in the business. I really rely on a team to execute. Um, and they're laying the foundation for some of the processes that we'll continue to do as a business for years you know, going forward. Uh, I also believe, though, that 
it is a myth, right, that there's like some sort of perfect interview process to get at all the things that, that you want to. Um, we keep this environment very loose in the sense that uh, when you join our team, you kind of just get put into what, what we do. Um, because in order to be truly successful here, that has to be the attitude that, that you have. I mean, I, not everything, not all of your steps will be ordered here. And that's important to, to, to know and it's hard to interview for. So the, the concepts around launch are interesting to me, right? I, I think that one of the mistakes that people, that entrepreneurs make rather, is this whole concept of like super long beta periods. Now, depending on what you're building, having a beta is important, but get it out, right? Again, there's no perfect situation for whatever it is that you're trying to do. Push that thing that you wanna do out into the world as quickly as you can. Um, I mean, you know, my, my, my grandmother used to say, you stay along, you stay wrong. And, you know, it's important to balance trying to make sure that, you know, you're, you're thinking through what you're doing with just like not being one of those people that's always just thinking through something. So we all have that friend where it doesn't matter when you were talking to them, they're gonna tell you basically the same thing at any given time that they're thinking about doing X, Y, and Z. I would argue that the difference between entrepreneurs and that group of people is that they just go ahead and do it. All right, and that sounds simple, but I mean, that, that really is where like it is. Like that, that's, that's where the difference is made between entrepreneurs and everybody else. Everyone has good ideas. Everyone has cool things that like, could change the world very few people are willing to build them or to even work on teams to build them, right? I mean, I, again, I look at the foundational team that we have here as entrepreneurs in their own right because I don't walk into work every day and give them a playbook for what to, to do, right? I mean, my, my goal is to give them kind of general directions for where I think the business should go and work collaboratively with them to help execute those, those ideas. But there's no, there's no like, there's no single path for what we're doing here. This is all energy, right? Of, of us just trying to figure it out. That's not for everybody, right? And if it's not for you, that's fine. I think again, another thing that we kind of do badly in this this ecosystem or this world of entrepreneurship is talk badly about people who take more traditional corporate routes. You can have a lot of success in corporate America, right? There's a ton of opportunities to innovate and and I like, have extremely fulfilling careers. It's just very different than this, right? So you have to know what environment you're going to, to be most successful in, what, per, like, what type of personality do you have, and go into that world. But this world is not for everybody. And what's funny is that a lot, everybody almost thinks that it's for them. And most people don't actually want this life. Yeah, so I read a tweet on, uh, from Jay-Z years ago, probably 2013. And someone asked him a version of this question, right? And he said, But what I believe is like, you know, don't listen to anyone. Everybody's scared. You know, everyone tells you how things worked out, but it worked out for you that way. You know what I mean? And then a lot of people will try to put their fears on you. You can't do that. No, you can't do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they just project and they're putting things that they don't believe that they can do on you. And it changed my life because when you're going through the process of starting a business, there are gonna be a lot of people that don't believe in what you're saying, right? And what I've come to learn is that if you're doing something that's disruptive, people almost by definition shouldn't understand what you're talking about. Um, successful entrepreneurs continue to go on and use that discouragement or like lack of understanding really as, as validation that they're heading in the right direction. So. Um, I mean, you, a, you know, a common thing with me is you, you have to, you have to keep going and I mean, you can't be scared. You're, you, if you're going to fail, like failure will, will find you. So I don't wake up any more to like looking for it. I'm sure that if it's coming, it, it will figure out a way to, to get to me. There, it's not going to get any easier, right? Life will continue to kind of develop for you. And that's more family, more expectation, more bills that you have to pay. And so you'll build up more reasons why that switch shouldn't happen. You should do it when you feel most inspired. And I would argue we have the most energy to actually uh, make things happen. Past that is like, and who also wrote these rules about who, like when to do something. Some of the most disruptive things that uh, 
you know, that have happened, have happened by people who were well be, you know, they, they didn't fit the typical profile of whatever it is that was, that was, um, that was being accomplished. I mean, I, I remember reading um, as, as a kid that Congressman Lewis spoke at the March on Washington at age 23. And when I heard that, it was like, well, I know what's possible at, at age 23 because he was speaking to and has given one of the most iconic speeches of all time in his early 20s. So you've got to resist this idea that if, if there's a perfect time to go out and do it, um, for some people it's later in life, but if you have it now, do it now. So if you're starting a business, you are going to be told no, right? No is, that is a part of the journey. If you can't take no's, you shouldn't do this, right? You should be honest with yourself and don't pursue this path. I mean, we, we were 97 no's in before the first yes came. So, I mean, that, that's a part of the journey. What I'd say though, is that you have to look at that as a point of validation to a certain extent. If you're actually building something that's unique, then people that you're speaking to shouldn't get it, right? To use an example of Uber, right? If we rewind 10 years ago, and I would, were to tell you that a random person in a car in the city is going to come and pick you up and take you to your destination that's not a taxi, you would say, I'm, I'm not going to do that, right? Or another example, if I said, hey, you can show up in any city in the country and stay in someone's apartment, right? That, that sounds wild, but we call that now Airbnb. People, people shouldn't understand disruption easily and it should feel uncomfortable to a certain extent if you're building something that's actually unique. So take no as confirmation that the thing that you're doing isn't just a run of the mill product that um, everyone could, could really execute you know, to, a, to a certain extent. There have been, been a number of challenges, right? So I'll, I'll talk about the, the first challenge as it relates just to like operating a business um, a ton of ton of growing pains and just understanding how we just talked about team but like how to bring teams together and to articulate a singular mission right that people believe in and are, are willing to kind of work towards with you um, I'd also say though I mean one of the challenges that I didn't expect is just the amount of time that it takes uh, where especially in the early days, the personal sacrifices that have to be made as an entrepreneur are, I mean, it, it takes a lot. Um, I mean, I, I, I continue to work most days of the week, but certainly when we started, it was seven days, like, no question, right? No vacations, no TV. I mean, it, it was, I mean, I was totally dedicated to uh, this, this process, and I'm not sure that everyone like fully understand that when they decide to just get into business. I, I've always been inspired by the, the potential opportunity that this business could have, right? And again, I, when I say that, that probably makes people think about money. That's not really what I would ever really think about. It was to me about the number of people that could work at the company, the number of people that could be members and connect to, to the company. And so. I am, I'm in a mode now where I think what we're doing here has the potential to really change lives. And because of that, even when it got tough, even when I didn't feel like doing it anymore, I will hold on to that thing. Which again, I mean, money and fame, those things are not enough to sustain you as you're going through this process. There has to be some larger purpose as to why you're doing it. And my larger purpose was, was really always been centered around um, the, the collective impact that I think this business can make. Yeah, I mean, so for me, Atlanta Atlanta's a, a cultural capital, right? This is a place where um, we're making stuff that the world sees everywhere, but we don't have a showcase that's in Atlanta to, to talk about that work. Right? We go to an LA, to Austin, um, to, to different experiences, and those are great, right? But Atlanta deserves an experience that's ours. And so um, A3C is going to be that platform. Um, three days of conference, all week long, you'll have access to different music performances, and we're bringing the biggest thought leaders in the country to uh, the conference to speak. And so I'm, uh, I'm excited about it. I'm excited to watch it grow. I think that you know we'll see over over the years that 
more and more people will see this platform as a good way to connect to one another, but also get really good information. And we, we've got a lot to still build, right? I mean, there's, there's more clubs coming. Uh, there's some exciting announcements that we're going to make in the digital space coming up. Um, A3C is going to continue to expand. And so, as I said, I mean, we're, we're just starting with, with this. And I think what you'll see is us continuing to kind of expand this platform over time. Um, hopefully giving the ability for, for more people to demonstrate the things that they're passionate about through. So um, my goal for this over the next couple of years is if, it to be kind of an institution that people are able to go to and, um, and whether it's professionally or socially, have that, that thing help them. So um, a lot more coming. I don't know, you, you, you gotta keep moving, right? Being an entrepreneur is about just continuing to keep your feet moving no matter what happens. That really is the test. Um, there are going to be highs and lows throughout the entire journey, but the, the process, as cliche as what it sounds, is really where you know the, the success and like, where the work is.